Aristotle condemned democracy as a bad system because of its characteristics. What the church should do when there is dictatorship, prayers, call upon intentional assistance, carry out peaceful demonstrations to remove a dictator, could offer good governance to weaken the dictator, can also publish articles or literature. Can cause reconciliation and can think of any other means that can bring order. The church and politics. The one who rules has a lot of impact on the moral behavior of citizens. Therefore, the church must be involved in choosing who should rule. Should be involved in choosing who should rule. But the church should never get involved in imposing a ruler or regime into the people because they will rebel. But the church should never get involved. That's what I was saying. Or they will rebel. Christians and dictator, dictatorial state. Prayers. The, the church, the Christians should engage prayers. Prayers of change, prayers of peace, prayers for reconciliation. Church should be portraying exemplary leadership. The church has leaders. If the leaders themselves are dictators, they can then not turn around and point a finger on the government or the political leaders. So it must have an exemplary leadership. Church should also participate in elections. There are many ways of participating in elections. We have monitoring and election, e.g. Can jo Joint Christian Council has been fronting some people to participate in elections, civic education, they would also be observers, and they would sometimes give uh, give uh, advice. Then stand to be voted in office. Form political parties. Use the judiciary to ensure justice. Sensitize people on good governance. Peaceful demonstrations, promotion of love and unity to weaken dictatorship, mediation between opposition and government, sacrifice themselves for the cause of democracy like Jesus did. Lastly, if all means, all means fail, Christians may resort to other means like armed, armed struggle to end dictatorship. That is the last resort. The last, if all things have failed, and dictatorship, if you look at some of the regimes that we have gone through, I think there is a time where the church joined the hands with the deliberation of Uganda over the years of the, the 70s and 80s. 
That is only when it is necessary an armed struggle. And uh, politics has been described as a dirty game, which is regarded as the Christian dilemma. For example, telling lies in an attempt to win support. We know there are so many political candidates in the electoral process who want to win by telling lies, promising many things, sometimes involving murder of opponents. And here we give an example of Gaddafi. We have gone very far, but even in Uganda, there are some people who have been known to have been killed by their opponents. Most politicians are corrupt, using shortcuts to wealth. Corruption is broad. There are those who are buying votes. There are those who corrupt the minds of the people in order to support them. But also when they climb and get there, they use shortcuts in order to become wealthy. There is also generated hatred on political ideologies like we see today. We have many political parties in Uganda. But there is a lot of hatred because each party has got a different political ideology. Then impacts on family leading to breakups. A member of a certain family where the husband was supporting a different party and the wife was supporting another. They would always be joking casually at home how each one's candidate would win. At the end of elections, it happened that the wife's candidate reminded the winner. And as usual, when they were home, she thought that they were joking and she was joking to her husband how the candidate she supported became victorious and this angered the husband. And the husband ended killing the wife. And I think up to now the man is in prison. I don't know what happened later. But also it promotes sexualism in some cases. Because some of the political uh, political supporters or those who are behind certain political ideologies tend to sideline religious ideas and they tend not to listen to the truth that is being preached against politics so they would rather decide to remain secular than becoming religious. There is blackmailing which is not a Christian virtue. Some people talking ill of the others. So many things they will pile on you in order to be blackmailed and people hate you. Rigging of votes. All these we are talking about so that you understand when you become you want to be a politician, to be a light. It becomes a dilemma because the moment you go there, you'll find the ground is not level. There are so many social, economic, and political issues that will water down your religious virtues. Then there is also selfishness, e.g., demanding increase in salaries, which we are observing today. Almost in every year we have legislators advocating for increase of their salaries. When civil servants are just getting peanuts, it also promotes tribalism and nepotism. 
and as a result it will undermine development because a leader might now begin looking at people of his own his own family his own tribe and they begin promoting some of the people even when they don't have the qualification or improving the infrastructure as when you read into King Solomon's reign he developed more of the southern kingdom than the northern kingdom so here there is a problem which we can still have to, to look at so the question is how politics is not a dirty game for Christians how can we play politics and see that it is not a dirty game we look at citizens of the state civic duty you know you are a citizen of the state much as you are a Christian you have a civic duty in the politics of the society you have to exercise neutral rights so that you don't incline the left or the right become light of the world guide politicians don't fear to speak the truth don't fear to say what is supposed to be done because we know power comes from God Jesus gave us a go ahead to participate in politics e.g. when he was paying taxes he says pay taxes to Caesar because they belong to Caesar and then pay to God what belongs to God so you need to ensure good moral laws are legislated which do not sideline one side against the other or favor one side on the expense of the other God chose religious leaders to execute political rules e.g. Moses David and others we may know influencing the balance balanced religion or development when you become a leader and you are a Christian make sure that all the people under your leadership are God's people try to balance your leadership balance the development balance you know all other that require a well focused morally upright leader how the church has fallen short of its expectations in other words the church as we said it is light and salt it has expectations Jesus has said that the, the believers, the members of the church, are not supposed to be of this world much as they are in the world. So there are certain things the church must be ready to avoid. One, institutionalizing ignorance, where we make ignorance as part of our everyday life. We appreciate it. We work by it, go by it. We don't mind whether people know the truth or not. It becomes a recognized element in the community. Some church leaders are materialistic, and this is obvious. We don't want to say it lightly. You will find a church leader is living like an an earthly person they have built mansions they drive cars they have fleet of cars parked at their homes they are running businesses they are living luxurious lives when members of their churches are going hungry 
They have even been participating, known to have participated in land grabbing. They have even grabbed spouses of their church members. They have become materialistic. Some church members which may not be around here, but you might have heard, they have their own jet planes. You, you, you can imagine Jesus walked on foot. He had no bicycle, he had no mule, he had no horse. You remember he borrowed a horse when he was entering Jerusalem. So some church leaders are corrupt in that perspective. They are corrupt. Abandoning spiritual roles and taking up politics. The role of a church leader is supposed to take the gospel of salvation to the people. And I told you one time that if you go to a church that does not preach the gospel of salvation, but instead is preaching, sowing the seed, tithing, and whatever. Be careful you leave that church. The church of Christ is not after wealth, after money. Even if money might be necessary, it is not the primary role of the church. Tribalism and nepotism, these days, you find that leaders of the church recruit their own people into ministry. Some of them have been known to solicit for money in order to recruit. And I can assure you, I'm saying it, those, as Jesus said, their vindication has already been determined. Abandoning spiritual roles and becoming politicians I've been reading of one spiritual leader who has sold off his church and gone into politics and this is very very annoying and unethical and for sure something will happen. Some adherents are encouraged to cause violence, fighting because the fact that we might belong to different dockets of political ideologies. If the members in the church happen to be in those different dockets, they will be encouraged to cause violence and fight one another. And yet we know that our political leader is Jesus Christ, who has no party. It is only one, and we are all one. There is also an observable exploitation of the poor by encouraging what I had already said, sowing the seed policy. If you don't sow the seed, you are not prayed for, and you are not blessed. And this is not what Jesus Christ taught. If anything, the poor were the focus of Jesus' ministry. Therefore, that is where the problem of politics in the church, or the church and the politics, can damage the church. The practical role of the church in society to give hope to the suffering, e.g., war victims. Church is supposed to give hope and the suffering by visiting those who are in refugee camps, those who have been displaced by wars and are somewhere suffering. It is supposed to promote holistic education, e.g. Uganda Christian University, which provides complete education for a complete person. That is the reason why you are studying this course unit and others which are foundational. 
In fact, some people have tried to say that what you are doing, which we call mainline courses, a foundation, no. Those courses will mean nothing unless they are founded in your faith. Promote health care, e.g. Christian hospitals, we have like Mengo, we have like Rubaga, we have others. Give an opinion on the more moral issues, e.g. domestic violence bill. What does it mean? What is our role in that one? Then justice and human rights for the oppressed is where we should be participating. Then offer prayers to those in leadership. The church has got a very, very important prayer for the leaders. Every morning, every Sunday, and any other time, the church has been engaged to pray for leadership so that when the leadership is focused, when the leadership is protected, when the leadership is well grounded, then the nation will live in comfort and peace. Encourage dialogue between warring party, warring parties. We know what was happening in the northern Uganda conflict. We know what is happening today among the parties. NRM, NUP, FDC, DP, UPC, all those. And the work of the church is not to be partisan, but engage a, a dialogue. There is no way how the church can engage dialogue if you are partisan. We need to call for peace through prayer and peaceful demonstrations. There have sometimes been prayers for peace. Although le uh, uh, less of the ground is where the church participates in peaceful demonstrations. Either there is fear or there is something we may call, uh, I may call it, um, um, I, I, I'm missing the word, compromising. You, you compromise because sometimes you have here a friend, they are friend and they are not in the same parties, you are looking for a way. How are you going to pray for peace when you are supporting either side or you are fearing that if they identify you as uh, praying for peaceful means or supporting somebody, then you are going to lose. Of course, we are not supposed to be supporting or showing sides, but we are supposed to pray so that peace can come and we live better. The church can also print and publish literature on all aspects of life so that it is available to people who can read and understand the position of the church and the position of the state. We should encourage a sense of stewardship and accountability. The church leadership or the church itself is a steward of God which should take responsibility of all that is entrusted in her care and should be able to give accountability. When peace prevails, that is an accountability. When we front good leaders, that is accountability. And the reason we are having here like you see you, a church institution, is that we should be able to train those who can become leaders tomorrow. And when they lead well, we have given an accountability. You have heard it said many times, our graduates from UCU Law School are selling. That is an accountability. When you put them on a scale to weigh, they weigh heavier than others. That means we are the church is contributing something into the stewardship of God's people. They are able to perform and they return glory to God. 
conducting Christian marriages on behalf of the state. Because the church is spiritual, the state has given the responsibility of conducting Christian marriages by conducting some counseling sessions affecting the people's faith in their marriage, in their families. Then promoting unity and oneness of the human fraternity. We have more in common than differences, irrespective of our differences. <coughs> we are different by tribe, clan, families, race. We are different by education. We are different by social status, political status, economic status. But we promote unity and oneness because in spite of all those, we are human human fraternity we have something more in common things we we share things we need to sustain this human fraternity irrespective of those differences the church and globalization you know you might have read through globalization much as it, is, it, it might, much as it might be portrayed as good but also it has the side effects. So globalization is an unprecedented breakdown of traditional boundaries such as geography, culture, etc. as powerful information technologies and market driven forces grow. And when we are talking about this one, there are so many experiences we have gone through, especially with the coming of modern technology where we have the, 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 the cell phone, where we have the, 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 the internet, where we have the computers and, uh, and the like. It has reduced the broad geographical area into what we call uh, a, a village, you know, a global village. Where do you want to communicate now? Or see somebody in the northern hemisphere it doesn't take long just tap the button things will come you'll talk you will see what is around them what used to be far off is no longer far away there is nothing secret inside the walls of your house as long as you put their gadgets everything will be spilled out so globalization has broken down our traditional boundaries where some of the traditions have been known and cherished to be good has been watered down by globalization. There are these technologies which have advanced market-driven forces and the market has broadened, it has become wide, but what is on the market? Today we know with the cell phone Pornography has been marketed. And pornography is one of the things that are affecting the morals of the people. So, the family, which is part of the church, under globalization, is in danger, is being threatened or wiped out. However, there are some advantages of globalization, as we would say where we have demand for human rights. But that one also goes with a number of question marks. Because when we say human rights, there are those who, which, which we have seen of recent, where people say it is their rights when they are really driven towards wrong behaviors like homosexuality, bestiality, and others. The gender issue. But we know in some cases it is trying to protect uh, the human people. Then sharing technology like visa cards and information, Facebook, Twitter, ETC. So when we are sharing in technology, like I said, 
we, we come to understand what is happening in the other side of the continent or the other side of the, of the village. Then the idea of visas helping you to cross borders and go to another country and you learn certain things that can positively come and, and help you to improve your life. We live by sharing knowledge. Democracy, where we say we are awakening revolutions. And this we can look at the Libya, Syria, now what is happening in, the, in Israel and uh, Russia, all this. We need to understand and learn from these revolutions, the good and the bad, and how they can help us. And we already talked about democracy is not the good way of, of leadership as compared to a uh, republic. There is, is a trade through common currency, e.g. the dollar, the euro, etc. Although the poor nations will always be undermined, but the common market with the common currencies or open market with the exchange of the dollar and the euro has helped business to go through common security, common environmental policies, all of these are some of the things that we need to look at as affecting the church either for good or for bad, but we are looking at the good side of it. However, we need to come out with a critique of globalization because we may say it is good we can interact, we can hear, but we have to critique all those things that we say they are good. You have already talked about uh, this, uh, this issue of uh, uh, demand for human rights. There are those who are demanding human rights in a negative way. So here there is what we call demand for democracy, which opens elections. They say if we have to be democratically governed, we need to, to, to bring the uh, democratic ideologies. And yet we have already seen the, side, the, 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 the bad side of democracy. It, it has tendency for selfishness. Then transparency in business practices. Accountability of human rights. So, so if we are talking about this, how do we critique them? How relevant are they? How moral are they? This brings out to the International Court uh, of Justice or International Criminal Court. Homosexuality and foreign donations. Active involvement in the battle against HIV and AIDS. And when we are talking about HIV and AIDS, it brings in COVID and others. And you know the genesis of these diseases. They are, natural, they are not natural diseases. It is a global issue that has been brought about by science and technology with an intention of reducing uh, population, world population, so that a few can exploit the remaining part of the world. Urbanization issues are brought issues of privatization, but with urbanization, you know urbanization has displaced people. Urbanization is part of globalization. It is part of industrialization. So there are so many things that much as they are good, but also they are affecting people, affecting the well-being of the people, denying the people to live, denying or giving the, 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 the privileged people sit upon the underprivileged and taking a big percentage of the world economy into their hands. We have the legal and economic structures 
We talked about capitalism the other day. Capitalism is against socialism and communism. Capitalism advances the idea of individualism. And individualism, according to the church, is not acceptable because it disintegrates the idea of communal life. The education of computer and IT, strengthening family cohesion, has brought family planning. What is the purpose of family planning? If we talked about education of computer and IT, which is also brought down into the issue of family, family planning, family health, and so on. What is this education offering? Is it bringing a universal kind of what we would call um, universal freedom, individual freedom? What is it bringing? So when we are making a critique, we need to know what is good and what is bad within the system. The church has membership for every part of the globe, but each local church maintains its own futures. Therefore, globalization should not lead to moral corruption. The other day you were hearing how the Western was enforcing the issues of sexual, uh, sexual freedom, enforcing homosexuality among the peoples of the other continents because the idea of globalization is to bring such ideas to impact all the people of the of the world so it is a problem that what as we may support globalization for the advantage of certain areas of life but it has also become a disadvantage by watering down our morals. Church, community of ethics and love. Therefore, we would want to say that the church refers to those who are called by God and have the Holy Spirit. Such a people should be able to make their community abandon evil because of the power of the Holy Ghost in them. But why? Is the church failing? If that be the case, why is the church failing? It is failing because many claim to be Christians, but they are not, which we have been calling nominal. It takes true Christians to live ethically and to love one another. Persecution of the church. Christians should be ready to suffer for their faith. Because the Bible teaches, if we are to reign with him, then we must suffer with him. So in this world, there is always suffering for a Christian, but we must be patient and endure hardship. But there is a difference between suffering for your wrongdoing and suffering for the gospel. Those should be different. So in conclusion, Christians do not live on earth to make earth the kingdom of God, but show the light to the salvation from sin which is provided by Jesus Christ. That is why they have to live ethically upright lives because Everyone is watching them. Everyone is watching you and me if we claim to be Christians.